wish we had a drum roll. But our, <laughs> our winner is Dr. David Sun Young Kang. Bigger and nicer than a little room. Congratulations. And, and thank you. Enjoy your evening. You really have to find a way to invite one hero. Thank you. That's thank good. you. See David, always remember one one slide. And this is the page with the energies. Oh, that one. That's an iconic. Uh, uh, that's an iconic page, and it was an energy study. And more interference from previous and following pulses are made in asymmetric settings. This doesn't happen. Here she is. Okay, we've done something right there. Long here. Ah. Oh. Oh, okay. yeah. The point is we have not applied any kind of smoothing or whatever, that's so broad. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's strong thickness, I don't know, what else do you have? We have a reciprocal superior happening here, so that this ablation will go steeply here. Flattening and steepening will cause yeah. a symmetrical tire. And regularizing corneal. Uh, today I'll be talking about the effect of using a novel optical zone calculation formula on corneal high orders after CLEX. Probably determining optical zone for any refractive surgery, including CLEX, is probably one of the most unscientific things we do every day. Now, the bigger, the better approach, it does optimize visual quality by inducing less high order aberrations from the cornea because it protects from the decentration effects at the expense of tissue and biomechanical instability and prolonged dry eye symptoms due to larger amounts of tissue removal. There is a need for a more scientific rationale for determining optical optical zone for quality vision after clicks. The title is Influence of Choroidal Width Between Cap and Enticule on Visual Outcomes of Clicks. The choroidal width is defined as a difference between the cap diameter and lenticular diameter. Vision, refraction, anatomical variables, abrometry, biomechanical indices, and operating sets were all controlled except for cap diameter. There was a tendency of greater correction of corneal toricity in the 1.0 millimeter corneal group, and this was continuous throughout the follow-up period, graphically displayed in this double-angle plot. So contrary to previous publication, there is no difference in vision nor high orders between these two groups, and the 1 millimeter corneal group demonstrates superior correction of corneal toricity compared to the smaller corneal group in my opinion. Thank you very much. I wish we had a drum roll. But our, <laughs> our winner is Dr. David Sun Young Kang. Bigger and nicer than a little bit. Congratulations. And, and thank you. Enjoy your evening. But he will help you. He is the king of corn the way for guy that fixes up your flex. And would you please raise your hand if you're actually currently doing flex? Plasma clex is a biologic phenomenon. It is the corneal consequence of near pure plasma cutting for lenticular creation. Applying just above threshold energy, but below super threshold energy that causes the microcavitation and the photo disruption. And we'll get there. So, what does plasma clex do? This it was actually a little more tough. 54 year old female, she's actually pseudo faking. She had LASIK 30 years ago and she had cataract surgery seven months ago, and she came to us because she wants price balance. I mean, look at that decentration. Right? Huge amounts of comments off the charts again. And look at that abrasion profile, it actually matches the decentration very well. Again, they sit up top of each other. You get to this wavefront, and you get to treat with that ablation profile, and you get to this post-op wavefront with high water aberration improvements.